Hello, this is Kevin with Smart Barn. Today we're doing an unboxing video so that way you can better understand what to expect once you've purchased your Smart Barn system and your package has arrived. I've gone ahead and packaged up a demo system that we'll be using for this video and future videos. To make this experience as authentic as possible, I have gone ahead and used packing peanuts. Here at Smart Barn, we have a love-hate relationship with packing peanuts. We use the pink anti-static packing peanuts, which I'm just gonna I'm just gonna deal with all these right now. We'll just pull them all out and pile pile these up over here. Here we go. I'm just going to go ahead and start pulling everything out of the box, laying it out on the table, and then we'll go through each piece of equipment. Now that we've unboxed everything, we'll go through each piece of this particular system, and then we'll talk about each item individually. First, we have our base station. Our base station is the central hub for the Smart Barn system. The base station has four antennas that we connect to it, a magnetic base 4G omnidirectional antenna, a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi antenna, a 915 megahertz sensor antenna that comes mounted in a PVC tube with a 30-foot cable and bracket so this can be mounted outside where all the sensors can see it easily so that way we get the most reliable connection between the sensors and the base station no matter what obstructions are on site. And then last but not least is our 40 auxiliary antenna for the base station. On the base station, you'll see at the bottom the four connections for the antennas. Inside the Smart Barn system guide, you'll see a diagram for where each of these antennas uh, connect to the four positions on the base station. Located on the side of the base station is a four pin waterproof connector that mates up with this plug on the battery backup. The battery backup is also designed to be installed outdoors if needed and only requires a 110 three prong outlet to connect to. And we love this product from Triplight. It is a two outlet surge protector. A few moments later. Um, we love it. Highly recommend that. Now that we've talked about the base station backup and surge protection, we're going to get into the sensors themselves. When we ship the Smart Barn system, everything is going to come pre-programmed to the base station and each sensor will be labeled with its location and six digit sensor ID to verify that we have labeled each sensor correctly. You can match this six digit sensor ID with the sensor ID tag on the sensor itself as well as you can double check that against the Smart Barn website, uh, which has all of the sensor IDs and name tags there. The reason why we label each sensor uh, when they ship is to make installation much easier. So there's no guesswork as to where this sensor is going to be installed. Um, on this particular setup, it's pretty straightforward because we only have five sensors, but if you have a larger farm with multiple barns and we have lots of sensors in each barn, 
it definitely pays to have each sensor labeled. Our dry contact sensor is going to be attached to our house controller. Our voltage and power meter is going to be attached to uh, our generator. And then we have two temperature sensors, one for each livestock room. This is a pretty common setup that we see in a one barn, two room livestock barn. Next up, we'll move over to our water meter. Water meter is gonna come with the pulse output. This water meter is gonna be used to monitor water consumption. And to do that, we need our pulse counter. We'll start off with the pulse counter as the first sensor. Um, our pulse counter is going to come um, with this lead and waterproof connector, which we have already gone and crimped on the other side of the water meter. This is a waterproof Molex connector that we like to use as a reliable and easy way um, to connect and disconnect. The next sensor we're going to discuss is the dry contact sensor. The dry contact sensor is very versatile in that virtually any piece of equipment that has an alarm output on it, we can connect the dry contact sensor up to the alarm output relay. Uh, I'll go ahead and put a picture up next to this video that has some examples of uh, dry contact um, sensor being connected uh, directly to the alarm output relay. Next sensor we have to talk about is the voltage and power sensor. Voltage and power sensor, pretty straightforward. Typically attached to your critical circuits, whether or not it is attached to the electrical panel inside of your livestock barn, attached to the generator to notify you when your generator is running or doing its test cycle. Or we can even take the voltage and power sensor and connect it to critical pieces of equipment such as ventilation systems, uh, feed augers, to let you know either if the system is getting power or the runtime of that particular piece of equipment. Moving right along is the temperature sensor. Uh, everyone is familiar with these, but with our system, our temperature sensor is going to have uh, two quick di disconnects on this run of wire to the temperature probe. That allows us to mount the temperature sensor on the exterior of the livestock barn and run the temperature probe inside the barn to whatever location you'd like to monitor temperature at. One of the nice things about the smart barn temperature sensors is the ability to easily and quickly customize your alarms and notifications. 